Hey everybody, welcome back to Sparks Fire and Bailing Wire. Before we move on to the next step here, get to tear this back apart. Thanks to a keen eyed viewer pointing out I put this together wrong. The connecting rods are supposed to be offset in the pistons, which I'll get to here in a minute. And it is in the manual. You know, I've kind of given up on this manual because it's not much of one. But it is in there. So I'll get this tore back apart. I'll show you what I did wrong. Lesson learned here is just because you've rebuilt engines before, don't go thinking you know it all. Before I tear it apart, I'll show you what I mean here. See how the connecting rod is off towards this side of the piston? This one's off towards this side of the piston. It's the same situation on numbers one and four or two. By doing it the way I did with the wrist pin centered in there, it's dangerously close to rubbing on that new liner I put in. I don't know if it ever would or not, but why take the chance? Okay, I have all the pistons out, wrist pins loosened. What you need to do on number one and three, bring the wrist pin back till it's almost flush with this side and the connecting rod clear to that side. This is the front of the piston. So I'll re tighten that back down so then when I put it back together the rod will be about here and the wrist pin will be basically centered in there. So one and three are that way, two and four are the exact opposite. The wrist pin's clear to that side of the piston, and I'll tighten the connecting rod down with it over here. Not a huge setback in this engine build, just basically time consuming. Nothing was damaged. Certainly a lesson I'm never going to forget though. Now that the pistons are reinstalled, I'm going to move on to mistake number two that I made. Which again, this is pretty minor. But if I had the engine installed before I caught it. There's two little gaskets that go on each corner of the main seal that I forgot to install. So I'm going to do that right now. There's two little L-shaped gaskets. One goes on each side like that. I'm going to put a little dab of gasket sealer on there before I clamp that down because these areas are always prone to leaking. Okay, I've got some sealer on there. Go ahead and reinstall that. Get the torque back down. I'll go ahead and put the oil pump in. That's driven off the of gear on the camshaft. Put the output line in at the same time. A lot easier to get it started than to try and bend it. There's not a lot of room to work there. Go ahead and get that bolted down. Okay, there's that. I had taken this pump apart and cleaned it up good. Just spinning it by hand, it pumps oil real well, so I'm confident that it's a good pump yet. If you're rebuilding an engine and there's any doubt at all, replace it. Front cover can go on next. Gasket sealer on it. Put a little bit of 
this assembly grease on the crankshaft so I can get the seal over it. Timing cover will be the next thing to go on. I've already got the new seal put in for that. bolts in that, get it tightened up. Now I can install the governor housing. That gear is run off the cam gear. And as the engine spins, springs these weights out. That's the governor. It presses up against this linkage on the other side. bolts tightened up. I also need to put a gasket under there yet. Get that snugged up. Now the oil filter housing can go on. Start putting the oil lines on. This is the front of the governor hauser in here. That's the piece that slides out as those weights fling out when the engine's running. And this will eventually have linkage back to the carburetor. And this is the linkage that comes from the hand lever on the tractor. Last thing, we can get the water pump bolted on. And that will take care of the front and the side of the engine for now. Ready for the oil pan now. Got some gasket sealer on these corners where they're prone to leak. The front and rear just strips of cork that lay over the They ought to be fun to keep in place while trying to put the pan on. Go ahead and get this bolted down. I'll bring you back when I'm done. Ready for the flywheel to go on next. As you can see, these teeth are pretty chewed up. So I'm going to flip that ring gear over so we got the fresh side of the teeth.
That's just the shrink fit on there, so I'll let it cool off and it'll shrink back on and be ready to install. Yeah, I'll get those bolts torqued down and be ready for the clutch. And I'm going to try and get the engine wrangled down in there. standard amount of jostling to get it in place. It's in there and bolted up. So next I can work on putting the head in. I waited to do that because if the head's bolted on there's really no good way to bolt a chain to it to lift it. So I got it in place. Start prepping, cleaning this up again. Get these bolts out there and hold the sleeves in. Get the head put on. Again, these bolts are just temporary. That washer overhangs the sleeves just enough to hold them in place until the head gets reinstalled. Put these studs back in first. Stick double nuts on these and get them all seated. They'll be ready for the head. Okay, the studs are installed. Time for the head gasket. Head gasket says up on it, which you can't. It won't go the other way anyway. That one don't line up. So there's no way of screwing that up. It only fits one way. Now we're ready for the cylinder head. Okay, that can get torqued down, get the rest of the bolts in. This head I had taken to the machine shop, had all new valves put in it. Face the head off, made sure everything's flat and true. The reason this engine originally quit is it dropped an exhaust valve on one of the cylinders, I don't remember which one. But, it's all fresh from the machine shop, ready to go. Okay, I got the head torqued down. The half inch bolts are all 70 foot pounds of torque. These small 38 ones are 28 pounds. You just start in the middle and work your way out in a random pattern. And once I run this engine for a while, I'll pull the valve cover off, double check my valve lash, and retorque it again. But that's a ways off yet. So the next thing to do is put the push rods in. They just sit down on top of the tappets for the cam. Double check, they're all seated. Feel like they are. Now the rocker shaft can go back on. Before the nuts, this sheet metal splash guard goes on. That's just keep oil from splashing too much in there. And I'll get these torqued down to 25 foot pounds also.
I install the fittings for the rocker shaft oiler. Just a U-shaped hollow tube that fits on there. This end of it goes into the rocker shaft to feed it oil. Then the oil can just drain back down alongside the push rods to get oil up to that fitting. There's a line that comes from the filter housing up. And that's what comes up and feeds this. Okay, the oil lines are all routed. Get my little brush and touch that up with paint. Oil pressure gauge is installed. Need to install a new oil filter, which I have not got yet. And I'll need to get the distributor installed yet. Which I think I'll do in the next video. I think I'm going to stop here for this video. The next step is going to be adjusting the valve lash which is a fairly complicated process. I think this video is probably getting pretty long anyway. I'm not sure where I'm at. But this is where I'm going to stop for today. So tune in next time. We'll get the valve lash set. we get the distributor in. Get the spark plugs, wires, That should finish up this side of the engine. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you find these videos helpful. Make sure you leave a comment down below. Hit the subscribe button. Like it. Share it. And while you're at it, check out my buddies. Zane at HodgePodge Dodge Garage. James at Third Coast OBS. And Cody at White Dock Productions. They all got good channels. We help each other out. Another recent addition to my YouTube friends is Herb over at Michigan Muscle Car Garage. Make sure you give him a shout out to him. He's a Chevy guy, but hey, we can't all be perfect. So go check him out when you get a chance. Catch you next time.